I'm Andrew Mann, Revival Building Group. Welcome back to Taylortown. We're all finished here. Let me take you through this home. absolutely love how this kitchen turned out. The natural cabinets with the style stone countertop, full height backsplash all the way to the ceiling. One of the cooler features of this home is behind the accent lighting are the actual outlets for the cabinets. Instead of having them in the wall here, we put them up underneath the cabinetry to kind of give the kitchen a little bit more of like a sleek vibe. The black kitchen faucet, really stands out in this home with gold accents. Additionally, we talked about this in the last video, but we put a three-step water filter underneath the sink tied to this faucet right here for fresh water filtered through three different filters. I like to do that in almost all the projects now because the filter in your refrigerator is only one simple charcoal filter a lot of the times, maybe not even, and it's not really taking out those heavy sediments or minerals or metals or whatever are in your water. Hopefully it's not too bad. <laughs> it's better than nothing, but this takes things a little bit further. Make sure your family's drinking clean water. Additionally, the sink here, we went with a sink with a whole range of cutting boards and tools that sit in this little groove right here. Typically, you see garbage disposals hooked up to a switch or maybe a switch underneath the cabinet. You gotta open a cabinet or it's on the switch on the wall here. Um, but I like to go with a air switch to turn the garbage disposal on. You line it up symmetrically with all the stuff on here. So rather than reaching for a switch while your hands are dripping, you just have this little button right here that's super sleek and matches the finishes on the soap dispenser and all the other water faucets. In addition to the backsplash and the under cabinet lights, a lot of these cabinets have like specific functions. A lot of people have, you know, iPads, kids' phones, your phones, computers, everything sitting on top of the countertop. So putting outlets in the back of the drawers is a really great way to get all the charging type apparatuses and technology into a drawer, plug it into the back, and that way you don't have that mess up on top of your countertops. Coming over to the range, standard six burner gas range, super powerful stuff. You gotta make sure your gas and everything in your house, the gas lines and the valves are all tied into the wall properly so that things like this can sit flush against the wall. Sometimes you'll, you'll go into houses where they didn't necessarily think about that and you'll see the range pulled off of the wall a little bit, but with the way we roughed it in, combined with the backsplash, the thickness of the backsplash, this sits as close as you're gonna get it to the wall without messing up the wall. The way you typically wanna approach a kitchen design, you know, these three drawers here, hold all like your cooking pans, any sort of things that are gonna be used on the actual stove. Conveniently enough, it's also located, you know, within arm's reach of the sink and dishwasher. So everything's going away quite easily. You wanna keep these things as symmetrical as possible, especially if they're straight line in view. Our coffee bar is 100% symmetrical. You wanna try and balance the kitchen out, especially in areas around the range and the range hood. Over by the refrigerator, you're not really worried about that so much because it's kind of a different experience. Another cool feature in this house I talked about previously was the toaster oven cabinet that also holds a blender. While you're using it, you can slide the cabinet doors into the cabinet. Those are quite cool. That way you're not leaving these cabinet doors open. You can slide them back in there, store them away while you're using this. This tray comes out because you don't necessarily want to be toasting something in a wood cabinet and the blender as well. And everything's right here, easily accessible. And then slides back in. The kitchen, we have seating area, but we also have a kitchen table over here. It's not necessarily a traditional kitchen table in the sense that it's in a separate room. We do have a dining room in this house, and then we have a second area of cabinetry that we refer to as the coffee bar. Did get a new espresso machine set up over there, but this area is kind of for like all the snacks, pull out drawers, all that stuff is kept over there, easy access. 
So it's kind of like a, an addition to the pantry. The coffee area is a nice feature in this home because it got all of this free space over in the main kitchen for like prepping dinner or entertaining. And then you can kind of have like this beverage bar over here. A lot of times you'll see like an additional refrigerator in areas like that. But the refrigerator in this house is quite large. So we didn't really need a, a second refrigerator for like wine bottles or sodas or beers or anything like that. We also have a second charging drawer over in this area for iPads, phones, and things like we talked about earlier. We have storage underneath the island here in the front. All the things that you need to store away that you don't really access all too much. The front of the island actually has six sets of doors, but three cabinets. Storage is the name of the game here. Even with a large kitchen, you don't want to squander the storage. You want to be intentional about how you're designing your cabinets and where you want certain things in the kitchen while you're designing them. Like where are you gonna put your silverware? How close is that to the dishwasher? You don't wanna be walking around and not a logical sense. You know, sometimes that happens, but you know, when we're looking at a custom kitchen, we really wanna focus down on the, the custom aspect of it, which is making it feel specifically for you and your needs. Things to touch on in this room are the Aria vents that we talked about in our last video. We enhanced the vents for, you know, 30 bucks. I think it's like $29.95 a vent. So it's not a whole lot of investment, but it does make the floors look amazing. Other than like the trim and the paint and the crown molding and things like that, in this room we've got a new mantle. We also did the herringbone shiplap centered on the center of the fireplace behind the TV. Originally it was gonna be peppercorn, but that's like more of a grayish blue. And once we got the samples on the front stairs, as well as the trim pieces, it just wasn't gonna work out. So we went with iron ore, which matches more of the upper cabinets and the cabinets over by the coffee bar. We have a lot of natural tones, but we also had a lot, a lot of black accents throughout the house. This house feels very large when you come into it. Before it had much more earth, like earthy pumpkin tones. Everything got painted white. The great paint job that we got, as well as the lighting, and the natural light from the outside just makes this house feel very relaxing to be in here. The last time we were all here, I'm almost positive we were starting to work on the steps. And the original intention was to stain the steps the same color as the floor. But once we sanded off the original stain and tried to sample the stain on the steps, the wood that the stairs is made out of and the wood that the floors are made out of, it just wasn't going to allow the stain on the stairs to ever look the way the floors are going to look. So we had to make a decision. The decision was ultimately to pivot and paint the stairs. The bluish gray was not working with the color scheme of the rest of this house, which I kind of anticipated and I'm really happy that we changed our minds and changed it to iron ore because the black stairs, even though we had to sand them and refinish them a few times, the final result is amazing. We also went with like the natural white oak railings and posts and then the black like simple square rod balusters. Everything looks, you know, simple but also elegant at the same time. Gives it that kind of waterfall effect. It's the same piece of wood here so the grain just matches and then just goes right down into the floor. Joe Teresi and his team did a great job refinishing the stairs a few different times until we got it right. So being that this is the first room that guests are going to see when they come in the house, it was really important for us to really get these stairs and all the trim around here really spot on. We added the boxes in the ceiling area or the upper wall area in this room and it kind of gives us this very dynamic um, effect. Upgrading this room and the stairs and everything really came together quite nicely and right off the bat when you come into this house now it's just kind of like whoa it looks great i'm really happy with everybody that you know contributed on this job so this was the end of a three-month project where we renovated almost the entire home including the kitchen family room powder room office dining room living room mud room eating area everything in this house got touched with new trim doors paint cabinetry lighting, furniture, 
It's a completely new home. I am Andrew Mann. We are Revival Building Group, and we are your builder. Thank you.